Hello and welcome to Will We Ever Recover? I'm Rob Glasscott. And I'm Ben Jabinski. The subprime mortgage crisis that stemmed from the banking sector of the United States has wreaked havoc on the country's economy and has spread to the economies of the world. The big question that remains is whether or not our financial system will ever fully recover from this financial mess to be the leading financial system it once was. The mortgage meltdown was essentially brought about by banks lending to borrowers who cannot afford their loans. This led to an increased number of subprime mortgage delinquencies and subsequent foreclosures, which in turn declined the value of the securities backed by the mortgages. Housing values in the U.S. peaked in the middle of 2006 and be began to decline steadily after that. With lower housing values, people were unable to refinance their houses. With the increasing interest rates at that time, combined with a huge number of adjustable rate mortgages home buyers had taken out, housing foreclosures soared. This dropped mortgage-backed securities values, which investment banks held to support their own internal lending. It's really hard to believe that all these factors came together to create this financial mess. It really is. There were a lot of factors that came together around the same time that really created the perfect storm for the financial meltdown. It can certainly be said too that investment banks and regular commercial banks became greedy and failed to anticipate the risks associated with these poor lending strategies. The financial sector essentially became blind with the money they were raking in without noticing the bubble starting to form. Regular mortgage buyers were to blame as well. In many respects, they were able to see their incomes were incapable of supporting the huge mortgages they were getting. This along with the adjustable rate mortgages the majority of home buyers were opting for were the key ingredients on the buyer side. Certainly, as said, the banks were, cert were clearly responsible as well, issuing loans to people that had a high chance of being unable to pay. Obviously, we are still feeling these effects even today, almost three whole years since the meltdown started to take place. Hindsight is 2020, and even though most of the banking industry can see these practices almost decimated the U.S. economy, really providing a free market impetus to not repeat these same practices again, the U.S. government has stepped in with new financial reform to make it definitively illegal for this meltdown to reoccur down the road. It certainly seems like a positive for the banking industry outlook, but it will take years to see the effects of the new acts and bills that have been put in place. Most importantly, the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act. <sighs> That's quite a mouthful. It certainly has been. Hopefully these acts will regulate the industry without having too much of an impact upon the financial markets and the global economy. Well, it can be said with certainty that the financial industry is changing all the time. Field reporter Cody Sumter came across a local specialist in the financial field at an undisclosed location. Cody? Well, we just happened to run into Professor Bugix here at Panera Bread and decided to ask her a few questions about the financial services sector. So first question is, what qualifications do you have to evaluate the financial sector? Well, I could give you the honest answer, which is I have no more or no less qualifications than anybody else. But the honest answer is, as someone who's followed the financial markets for years, um, most notably through uh, my teaching of uh, financial theory and analysis, of course, and uh, my background as uh, an expert in financial theory, um, I think I'm reasonably qualified, uh, particularly with my accounting background and since markets are driven by companies and industry. In what ways do you think the USA is best suited for a full economic recovery? Well, I think right now I would say the U.S. economy, the results are probably a little bit mixed. I would say that um, while the U.S. was the first to go into the Great Recession, uh, they're also the first to come out. I think uh, one of the most notable things is increasing investor confidence. Um, I think increasing consumer confidence is what's underlying the increase in investor confidence. I think that if we look at the improving economic outlook, while we still have unemployment of 8.8%, uh, it definitely has declined um, in the last several months. I think the uh, unknowns, however, could be very much an issue. That is uh, the Fed unwinding QE2, um, impact on interest rates, trying to take care of that. Uh, the instability, obviously, globally, uh, is going to be an issue. How Japan is resolved, how the Middle East issues are resolved, uh, particularly the Middle East with respect to oil, uh, as a key component of our. Consumer uh, pricing. Um, how
housing, of course, remain, remains problematic as well. But uh, the European Union, in particular, um, continues to face a, a more difficult or challenging economic time than we do. So, uh, as the world's largest economy, I think we're going to be pulling everyone else along with us. With the increased competition, do you think that, that America will ever return itself to the dominant player in the financial world? Well, that's an interesting question because some might even argue that we we haven't been dominant in quite some time. But I, I, I don't know that we will become dominant again. I think that with Deutsche uh, Bors putting into play, uh, acquiring the New York Stock Exchange, although it's now been countered by NASDAQ. Um, however, that I think has a lot of regulatory uh, concerns uh, involved with it. But I think that um, you know, the capital markets are operating 24-7, and there's no real need for a particular company to list in any particular region of the world. I don't think New York um, will ever sort of attain the status of uh, the global financial capital. I'd say London has probably argued to, uh, with some success, that it has had as much of an impact on the global capital markets as the New York Stock Exchange. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was certainly an interesting interview. Well, whoever knows Professor Bukix knows how much she loves her Panera tea and her financial markets. And it's certainly true, Ben. I thought it was significant when she hinted that the United States has been losing its grip on the financial services industry for some time now. Yes, that was definitely important. However, she also stated that she believes that the U.S. will ultimately lead the rest of the world economies out of this great recession, as she put it. She also made sure to note that we are in better shape than Europe although that is not something we should be overly proud of. That's right. She feels Europe remains in a great deal of trouble. However, she also thinks London is overtaking New York as the world's financial capital. So now for the big question. Ultimately, will the United States ever truly return to being at the summit of the global financial world? Ultimately, I could not in good conscience disagree with my financial theory teacher. So I would have to agree that I do not believe the U.S. will ever return to the dominance it once had. I would certainly have to agree, Ben. It will be an interesting couple of years to see how the United States will continue to adapt and grow within the ever-changing global economy. From all of us here at Will We Ever Recover, you stay classy, Lafayette.